Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week what I want to speak to you about is fear. And I will share how I can kind of go about or how people can go about overcoming fear. But what I really want to speak about is how if you allow fear into your life, how it can make your life smaller, how if you listen to it, you spend your life living within what they call the comfort zone. And if you live in the comfort zone, so the comfort zone is a place of safety. If you live in that space of safety, then you don't truly live. You don't experience life to its fullest. And fear is one of those things that if you allow it, it'll creep in in little increments in all areas of your life. I think I was quite lucky really when I had kids because um, the way that my life is, I've kind of been a ping pong ball and bounced all over the world. Well, not all over the world, but <laughs> to a number of different places within the world through my life and quite frequently. And I'd kind of convinced myself that because I'd been flying since I was really tiny, that my chances of something going wrong when I was flying got greater the more I did it. And so I developed this fear of flying. Um, it meant that not necessarily that I wouldn't fly, but I wasn't exactly, I didn't look forward to it. Um, so I didn't really seek it out if I could help it. But when I had kids, I realised that I couldn't let this fear interfere with their lives. I couldn't allow my fears to impact their lives. And they, it would do because they would sense it. Um, because children do, they pick these things up from us. So that was, it actually taught me a, a great thing. It taught me that fear, if you focus on the fear, if you allow yourself to give in to the fear, that that fear grows and it blossoms and it takes over everything. But that actually you have the power within yourself not to allow your thoughts to go that way. That actually if you focus on something else every time you feel, feel fearful, <laughs> that actually that fear diminishes. It's almost like that if the more focus and more attention you give it, the more fuel you put on the fire of fear. Is that right? <laughs> that sounds a little funny now. And the less you, attention you give it, the more you focus on other things and refuse to allow it to give it space, the more it kind of diminishes and finally fizzles out. Now, I mean, I'm talking about flying, but we all have fears. Um, I realised that I had a fear of exams and it affected the earlier part of my life massively um, because of something that happened in my childhood. Um, I also know that I, I don't really, because I'm dyslexic, I find it quite hard to, to write things that I know that other people that I don't know are going to read. And, and that has also impacted my life on and off for a while. If I allowed those things to give them fuel, to give them attention, to allow them to develop and grow and never to tackle them head on, my life would become immeasurably smaller. For starters, I love learning. And if I didn't allow myself to do exams, if I allowed that fear to rule my life, then the validation of the value that I have within myself would be diminished. And I wouldn't be able to do the things that I truly love in life. Again, with writing things that other people are going to see, if I allowed that into my life, if I allowed myself not to, to give into that fear, then my life would be immeasurably smaller. And funnily enough, sharing this, it reminds me actually of another fear I had, which I conquered. <laughs> um, and this was also to do with my dyslexia. It was about standing up and reading something that I hadn't ever read before. If I had to stand up in front of people and just speak from my heart, I didn't have a problem with that at all. Um, in fact, as you can most likely tell, I'm quite a talkative person. <laughs> so I find that really easy. But to stand up and read something that I hadn't ever read before, um, I had a lot of trauma around that from school and having to stand up in front of class. And the more that I had to do it, the more stressed I would get about it, the more fearful I would get about it, the worse the experience was. Because the more fearful I became, the way that the mind works when you're in fear or in that space of fear, is that the higher thinking, the, um, that sort of critical thinking part of your brain um, ceases to work as well as it does normally when you're in the space of fear. And instead, the part of your brain, the sort of the ancient sort of lizard part of your brain that deals with fight, flight and freeze is more highly activated. So the more fearful I became, 
the less able I was to read in front of people, which caused a vicious circle and made me more fearful, <laughs> more stressed. And in, in, you know, as it goes, I got worse at it. Um, however, as I got older, when actually when I was doing my training, when I started um, learning to be a consciousness coach, it was one of the things that I kind of decided within myself that I needed to conquer. And um, one of the things that they did on the course that we were doing was occasionally, or actually not occasionally, quite often, they would ask us to read a passage from the workbook that we were going through. And I committed to myself that I was going to do this. I was going to stand up in front of everybody and I was going to read from this book. Um, it took me a little bit of time to build up the courage, but eventually I did it. And I was doing it for me. I was doing it because it was a fear that I knew was holding me back. It was a fear that I knew altered my life and not in a good way. Um, and it was something I really felt I wanted to conquer. So I stood up and I, I spoke and I mean, I've, I'd learned a lot about speaking as I'd kind of gone through life. I knew I had to breathe deeply because when you breathe deeply, it suppresses, it sort of tricks the mind into thinking you're more calm than you are. I knew that I had to speak slowly because when you're fearful, your heart races and you tend to want to do things quickly and it causes more mistakes. Um, and as it happened, I managed to do it quite well. I also explained when I was doing it, or just before I did it, why I was doing it. And it was due to my dyslexia and everything else. And something really amazing happened. And I'm sharing this because when you're brave, when you face your fears, you become an inspiration for others. And I didn't do this particular thing to be an inspiration. It was my own personal fear. And I didn't know that anyone else was going through a similar experience. But after I'd finished and I'd sat down, the next time they asked somebody to read, this gentleman on the other side of the room put his hand up and he stood up. And he said that because I had done it and the reasons I'd given to doing it had inspired him to do the same and to challenge his own fears because he had also been crippled by the same fear. And I can't tell you how heartwarming it was to know that by me being courageous, and it might sound really silly because most people can just get up and read and it's not a big thing, but for me it was a massive thing, <laughs> that by being that and doing that, I'd inspired somebody else to face their fears too. Um, so when you're thinking about facing your fears, there's a number of things to remember. One, if you don't face them, your life becomes smaller. You do less things, you experience less things, you live a safer life. And by living a safer life, you live a less exciting, a less colourful, a less adventurous life, just a less life. But also by being courageous, by stepping out there, by doing things that keep that make you frightened, that make you feel scared, that you're not certain about, the more you inspire others to step forward too. You might not always know that you've inspired someone like I did in this particular instance. It might be a quiet inspiration of someone that sees it, doesn't share it with you, but you still alter their lives. And that is just the most amazing feeling to feel that your life really mattered to somebody else, that you changed the course of their life for the better because you chose to stand up. Um, and now I'm just going to speak a little bit into fear. So the thing with fear is the opposite of that is bravery. And you cannot be brave if you do not experience fear. So somebody who goes skydiving, who has absolutely no fear of heights or falling, is not brave. They're just doing something they love. Somebody who goes up who is scared of heights and falling and does it is brave. There is a big difference. So, and, and we all have different fears. For some of us, um, doing something on our own, going to a restaurant to eat supper on our own is scary. It's something that makes us stressed and fearful and something uncomfortable. For someone else, it's nothing at all. So whatever makes you fearful, don't judge it by what makes other people fearful. I mean, me standing up and reading from something I haven't read before is something that used to chill me to the bone. I used to hyperventilate, I used to feel dizzy and sick, I used to feel incredibly overwrought. But for most people, that's just a really simple thing to do. So don't ever think that your fears are silly. Don't judge yourself harshly for what causes you fear, because we are each individuals. And for some of us, something as simple as standing up and reading, as for me, is a massive, massive thing to overcome. Whereas for most people, it's nothing at all. And as I said earlier, there are things you can do with fear. One, as I've spoken about, know that the more attention you give it, the more likely it is to grow. Second of all, 
When we're fearful, our heart race rate speeds up, our breathing increases, and these are things that prepare us to fight flight. Uh, not necessarily freeze, but for fight and flight. And if you consciously choose to do the opposite, so maybe you can't slow your heart rate down, but you can take slow, deep breaths right down into your belly. You can become much more present, be aware of your physical being, be aware of what you're standing on or sitting on and of your surroundings, and take your thoughts away from whatever it is that is causing you fear. Those things can trick your body and your system into being more calm and less fearful because you're mimicking the state of peace and calm rather than allowing your body to carry on developing the triggers and the experience of fear. And other than that, all I can say is that sometimes if your fear is a massive one, it's to break it down and take it in small increments. Don't necessarily go and stand up in front of a massive auditorium and read from a piece of paper you've never read before, um, referencing my fear of reading out loud. Rather do it in front of some people. I think when I first started doing it, I did it in front of my children. And the more I read in front of them, the more comfortable I was. And the more that I learnt how to do it slowly, learnt how to inflect things into it and enjoy it. And the more able that made me then to talk in front of others. So take it little bit by little bit and slowly keep stepping out of this comfort safety zone and increasing the experiences of your life. As usual, um, I've put the links to my website, to my online courses and to my Ho'oponopono monthly um, sessions, which I'm going to be doing if you're interested in. And have a fabulous week ahead of you. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.